a lot of things. I've been in hurricanes. My wife and I, we were a part of disaster relief. We still are. We, we like to travel. We like to do those things. And, and we would go where, where uh, hurricanes were. One time we were in Perry, Georgia. And we had stopped for the night. And they said, stop. There's three hurricanes coming in back to back to back. And Hurricane Fran was the first one. And then Hurricane George was right behind us. So we stopped, and they said, stay here, and you'll be safe. Hurricane George took a turn and went right over Perry, Georgia. Now, it was already inland, and, but it was a Hurricane 3. By the time it got to Georgia, it was still a, a Hurricane 1 to Hurricane 2, they did it then. And I was asleep. I drove all night from Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I'm from, the great state of Ohio. How many Buckeyes are here? That's, that's really a shame. <laughs> that's really a shame. I thought maybe. So we drove all the way there and we stopped. And I, I was asleep because my wife won't drive. She likes for me to drive. She gets her paralyzed in, in order. <laughs> so we stopped there and she comes up, she wakes me up. What are you doing? She sat me down to make part of the deal. And she said, we're having a ball. You need to come down here. This hurricane is over top of us. I can get down, Robbie, and I promise you, it is quiet. And I said, there's no hurricane. I thought she was joking. We were in the eye of the storm. And all of a sudden, we broke loose again. Pecans were everywhere. There was a John boat, but there wasn't supposed to be a John boat. But we were near no water. And, and we were in this gymnasium that was solid brick, so we were safe. But being in the eye of the storm, being in a storm, that's crazy, isn't it? You've not lived life until you've been in the storm. Because I'm telling you, if you are not doing something for the Lord, the devil is never going to bother you. Mm -hmm. You'll never have a storm. Right. When God is quiet, He's doing something. Turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And find verse 35. Oh, that's in the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second book. <laughs> Mark chapter 4. I, I like to pick him up. He's a good guy. And, and, um, and you've got a great um, AMS. DOM, executive treasurer, uh, whatever we're calling them, you guys these days. Um, there's other things. There's other things. <laughs> Let's do it all stand. I like to stand for the reading of the word. And the same day when the evening was come, he said to them, now, now, now listen to this next phrase. Let us pass over to the other side. Now, if you, if you ever mark in your Bible, that would be a good, good line to underline. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, in the ship. And they were all also with him other little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and he said unto him, Master, carest not? Carest not? Carest not that we are perishing? Carest not that we are dying? Carest not that we are in trouble? We're asking Jesus if he cares. And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? That's from the question. They've been with him for a while. And they feared exceedingly. And they said to him, one another. Now listen to this next phrase. What manner of man is this? That even the wind 
and see ovations. They're questioning that. And they, they're, they're not calling him God, the Son of Man here. They're putting him on the same level they are. They forgot. Brothers and sisters, please don't forget that Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Keep it in your mind. Pray. Father in heaven, may I ask that you help us through uh, this uh, revival services. Oh, because this, this isn't revival. This is some services. Revival starts in the heart. I just pray that everyone here will know that, that you uh, wake up their heart, set them on fire, and Father, that they see a need in our world. They see our world coming to an end. I just ask that you be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I usually, I have outlined here, and uh, I, I probably won't use them, but I like to have them. I tell my students all the time, take them with you. You might need them. You might forget. And did anybody suffer from vertigo? Because I move around a lot. <laughs> so if, if you see me going back and forth, that's me. There are storms in life. I want you to go back to that, that first phrase in, in verse 35. It says, let us. This is Jesus talking to them. Let us cross over to the other side. You think of Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. They're going to get to the other side. Hmm. Spoiler alert. Go to, go, to, go to chapter 5, verse 1. And they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, which is Libya. To the country of the Gadarenes. They, came, they, they made it over there. Meaning, they got through the storm. I want you to know tonight, I don't want you to wait until the end. I want you to know tonight, you can make it through the storm. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're going through, God already knows it. You know what I love about old people? They've been through everything. Mm. They've been through everything. We, we do mentoring programs at our church, and, and we're getting ready to have another mentoring conference. And each year we have a mentoring conference. We start it off with a mentoring conference and some breakout sessions. And then we go into revival. The, the, the person who comes and speaks to our mentoring conference does our revival. This year it's going to be Dan's Merlin. I want our old people to mentor our young people. I believe that's a biblical principle, is it not? Yes, it is. Amen. It's a biblical principle for our older people to get involved with young people. I don't like it when young people wear their pants around the butt and they walk like this. That's right. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you something. I've got a really good friend who was on my staff at our last church. And, and, and he, he's a cop. He's a part-time cop now. He, he used to be chief of police in, in, in a major city uh, in, of Highland Heights in Northern Kentucky. And, and he said to me, he said, and, and, and I'm known as Bobby back home. Bobby, please quit telling people to pull their pants up. Why? He said, I'm a fat cop now. I can run them down when they got their pants half <laughs> <laughs> I get your point, but I don't like it when they're... But we have no one teaching them. So when they get through the storm, if no one's teaching them to pull their pants up, who's teaching them to get out of the storm? Mm -hmm. Nobody. That's the problem. There's no fathers in the home. You know most of the kids that we get in our home only have one parent, and it's usually the mother. You're going to hear me say mom. Where I'm from, a mom, that's a mother. So if I say mom, you know what I'm talking about. How I many of y'all got a mom? They were, they were good, wasn't they? Amen. You know, most of you had a mom, right? I understand that. I, I'm, I, I'm learning the lingo down here, Brother Bobby. I'm, I'm learning. I, I, I learned from Brother Larry Courtney. He said, that tastes so good, make your tongue slap your brains out. <laughs> and I learned... Daddy Walker had no idea what that meant. <laughs> my, my first degree is, a, is, is I have a, uh, a, I'm an English major. I, I try to learn to talk properly, and I'm learning how to talk Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I want to let you know that he said, let us cross over the other side. I want you to pay full attention to that because what he's saying is you're never by yourself. 
And if you've got a mentor, you're really never by yourself. And the Spirit of the Lord gathered my name, I'm in the midst. People, the, the young people need to know that. If you want young people to be a part of your church, get involved in them. Pour yourself into them. Hmm. I'm going to tell you something. You cannot put a youth program in this church if you're not putting yourself out there. Because listen, they're not coming in. Where they at tonight? Now, from this point on, each night, I, I, I told your pastor each night, I want to do a children's thing each night. I want you to try to get as many children as you can get. I want to bring the children in here, but I want you to get involved in them. We got a young boy in our church right now. His name is Dustin. Our church has really poured into him. He comes from a very difficult house. His brothers are on drugs, and, and, and we, we were pouring ourselves into them, and, and they, it didn't take, but it took for him. But it's still not saved. But you know what he will miss church? Is I just love you people. Mm. And I said, you know what? We love you back. But our love is not very good. But Jesus is. Amen. Amen. That's where love really comes from. So I want you to know you're not by yourself. This storm that they're about ready to head into, I've been on the Sea of Galilee a couple times, and, and, and one of the things I notice is that, that it's a valley coming in this way. So when that wind, that nor'easter comes through there, it just sweeps through there. And that, that sea is just, is just there. And the winds are, are just taking the water. Galilee has been flooded many times just because of wind. No rain, but wind pushing the water the Sea of Galilee. In 2014, 18 people died. Because of water, because of wind surge, they call it. But I see a here. It's wind surge. And, 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 and it's all over the place. Unexpected winds bring high water. Jesus knew the reputation. He created the Sea of Galilee. He knows what he can do. Right. God created this world. He saw the destruction of this world when Adam and Eve sinned. And he knows what it will do. There's no storm you've been through that God doesn't know. There's no, there's nothing you can be a part of that God can't get you out of. God is directing you out. The problem is we don't want to follow. Hmm. I want to do it on my terms, God. Right. I don't need you. Right now, our world is, is in a terrible situation. Isn't it? So much violence. So when the storm hits, I want you to know there's two ways to handle the storm. First is fear. How many of us get afraid? I pastored for a while over in Henderson, Kentucky, and, 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 and my son Jacob, who is six foot five now, and he's wearing a size 16 shoe, he says, oh, you know what, all of my boys are six four and up. And I'm 5'8". <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. well, my wife is 5'3". So, but my, my son Jacob used to run through the house. Russ used to run through the house. You know, he'd yell when the tornado time was going off. The tomato's coming. The tomato's coming. And he was so afraid. And, and we had to drive to this parsonage that we lived in. And we had to drive up to the church to open the church. And sirens are going off. Wind's blowing. We had to open up the church because that's where people gather in Bastion, Kentucky. It was that Advanced Baptist Church. They were afraid. And you know what that is? That's a mission field, man, because people come there and you get to talk to them about the storm. Right here, right here, right now, right now, tonight. They were afraid. One lady said, I gotta go back and get my dog. I got to go get my dogs, but that night a tree limb broke and it went through the cab of my truck. We drove our, our, my, my little car, I had a little stick shift, and I drove it up there. I left my truck at home. I thought, well, sure, it would be okay. A couple people lost the roots. One barn was completely destroyed. We were just at Winchester. We didn't really get the tornado. It was about, about a half a mile from us. 
the destruction of that. And she was worried about the little dog. Now I'm going to say something to you. And you're going to get mad at me next possible. And I'm going to stand by it. I don't care about your dog. I don't care about your cat. They don't have a soul. Oh, that's right. So sometimes we pay too much attention to that, but not enough attention to people. That's right. We pay too much attention to animals. Now, I'm not, I'm not an advocate to, to, to hurt animals. We got, I, I, I hate cats. We got two. <laughs> what? I've got, a, I've got a little girl that's got cystic fibrosis, so she's got therapy cats. She, and I cannot stand cats. And these things like me. <laughs> I shoot them with a nerf gun. Thank God I'm not a very good shot. I don't do that. But out of, out, out of fear and out of respect, in, 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 in Scripture we have two meanings for fear. One in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. We have two meanings and they're exactly the same. In the Old Testament, it, it's, we, 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 have, we have the fear of respect and the fear of violence. Shalaha Hamas. You hear that word Hamas? Mm. Fear out of violence. Shalaha Hamas. Genesis 6, 11. And, and, and you were, you're good to write that verse down. You go and look it up. It's talking about the world that was violence. The Hebrew word for violence is Hamas. Shalom, Hamas. Fear is what's going to control people. If you're in danger, fear can stop. It will, it will absolutely stun you if you allow it. God says, I don't want you to be stopped. I want you to move forward. There's too many Christians stopping because of the storms they're in. They don't, they don't want to go. Now, all of you raised your hand saying that you had a storm. That's right. Where are you going? Now, now listen, I want, I want to tell you something. They're, they're stopped going forward. But going backwards, that's still being stopped. Hmm. Going in a circle, that's still being stopped. Laying down and taking it, that's still being stopped. If you're not going forward towards God and, and, and the path that he wants you to go, you're being stopped. You have succumbed to fear. Hmm. God, why didn't you get me out of this? Where are you headed? One of the things that I, I, I don't like to hear someone saying, I just can't read my Bible. I just can't understand it. Mm. Can you read? Mm -hmm. no. But you kind of know. I think one of the worst things we ever did was come up with read your Bible in a year. I don't care if it takes a year or 10 years. Just keep reading. Amen. If it takes you a while to read something to understand it, take your time with it. It's, not, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not to hurry up and get your Bible read. You might say, well, Pastor, how many times have you read your Bible? You're not him. Bobby, how many times have you read your Bible? You're not Bobby. That's right. You are you. How many times have you read your Bible? I didn't say read it through. I said read it. And, and don't, don't just pick it up and read your favorite stories because then they become stories and not the Word of God. We, we spend so much time just moving around that we're not headed toward the Father. Fear stops us. It tells us we can't read our Bible. It tells us we can't understand it. And so we don't read and we don't learn. Fear has done a lot to us. When the storm hits and you have a lack of faith, you can either stop or you can focus. Now, 
I'm going to tell you something. If you say, well, I had to stop for a moment to focus on God. No, you didn't. You keep moving. You, you, you listen to the Holy Spirit. You don't have to stop and find God. He's right there with you. You, you, you look forward when you find God. I read a story yesterday about a young man that went to Israel uh, a few years ago as a missionary. Did, did you know, did you know that 92% of all of Israel are atheists now? Hmm. Hasidic Jews are, 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 they're the ones with the Hasidim, the little curls. They, they go to the Wailing Wall and, 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 and they pray. And, and, and they're at the Temple Mount. On top of that mountain is where um, the Muslims are. That wall is in Palestine. It's where they go to pray. And, and you have to cross through. When we cross through there, they always check us. They always check you to make sure you don't have anything. And you go into Palestine. And, and that's the only place in Palestine you, you're allowed to go. And they'll check you before you walk on the Temple Mount, where, where, where the, the, the most holy site in Israel, the second most holy site for Muslims, they will check you. And the Jews said, well, we can't do too much because they will shoot us. And we just go there and we just ask God. He doesn't listen anymore, so we don't want to. We just do it because we're supposed to. And if he comes, we want to be found without doing his business. Hmm. But then we should pray. Main Bathroom, Jesus called it. Did it? Isn't that what he called it? And they're praying this way. I think sometimes we pray that way. One of our foster kids came in and he said, We gotta pray again. <laughs> pray over our food. And then the other night we, we sit down and, I, and my wife sits down with him and she takes her Bible. And, and she opens it up and she reads to him. And I sit there and I watch them. Many get into the stories. Now, what they like about it is she's been in front of them. She'll tell the story. And they want to know, is that all you do is pray? <laughs> I wish I prayed more. I fail sometimes. The lack of faith. We're afraid. Am I afraid to do what God wants me to do because I'm afraid of the storm? I'm afraid to follow God. You all seriously say, come on, preacher. There's something you're afraid to follow God. I don't want to go. That kid that went to Gaza, that I was here to tell you about, he went to Israel. He lived in Gaza, right on the Gaza border. Now, by the way, uh, a little Bible here from the Old Testament, and I teach a little Old, Old Testament, and, and, and I always tell my students this, pay attention to what Joshua did not conquer. He got lazy, didn't he, Brother Bobby? He did not conquer Palestine. He did not conquer Gaza like he was told to, and it's still a thorn in his own flesh to this day. Wow. He didn't conquer. He got lazy. Maybe he was afraid to. But if you don't move for God, there's going to be consequences. Mm, yeah. There's either good consequences or bad consequences. When I was punished as a kid, my mom said, you're giving me consequences. That meant we were in trouble. Now, I know you all know about this, a switch. Mm. Now, I wasn't allowed to go get my own switch. My brothers and them were. But I come back from little one. And I had, a, I had a pop. He was a big old dude. And, some guy who would switch about that day and he beat the living dog out of me. And then went and got another one. He went and got one and brought one back that was cheap. He said, this is what I'm talking about. I don't do it next time. And he started to hit me with that. I said, what's that for? He said, for getting a little one. <laughs> he was a very loving father. Good, good man. And I feared him. And I respected him. That's the other part of fear. 
Do you fear God and respect God? What do you fear me of? What man can do to you or what God can do? The Bible says, worry about the one who can destroy the soul. That's right. Are we afraid of God? Are, are, are we afraid of God? I don't want you to be afraid of him. I want you to respect him. I want you right. to have fear out of respect. Right. Because if you have fear out of respect, you're going to have a good relationship with God. I respected my father. I mean, I was a bad kid. And I was a horrible kid. And I knew I was horrible. Most of the time, he wasn't with us. He would talk to us. And I'd rather him punch me right in the mouth than sit there and listen to that. But now I can remember those teachings. God will teach to you. But if you're afraid of God, he can't talk to you. Hmm. You know why? You shut him off. Have you ever been afraid of someone when you were a little kid at school and they're talking to you? You don't hear anything. You're just afraid of what they're going to do to me. When I was a little boy, I thought God sat on a, on a big throne like this with lightning bolts in a bucket. Exactly. How many of y'all thought that? I did. I was told that. You know, watch it. God's going to strike you with a lightning bolt for that. <laughs> You're only looking. I was a bad kid. But let me ask you this question Do you pray? And, and I, I mean, really pray. Because sometimes I find myself doing ritualist prayer. Lord, thanks for the food we're about to eat. Thanks for my family. Thanks for this. And we're going to pray in the mouth. I don't know what you mean. Sometimes we teach, and we teach our children that. When I lived in Harlan, Kentucky, I, I, I wrote a prayer at Bobby Lee here. Now lay me down to sleep, apart my truck across the street. If it should only fall awake, I'll pray the Lord he'll hold that prayer. Because <laughs> it was a straight street. But you know, we can write prayers like that, and it can be the best prayers in the world. And we can go through it ritually. There's nothing wrong with saying the same prayer over and over and over. There's nothing wrong with that. If we mean it in our heart, and we're actually communing with God. If we're actually talking with God. But sometimes when we do things out of ritualistic things, we are not communicating with God. A lot of times because we're afraid. Mm. A lot of times we're just doing it because we want to be doing it. I want you to realize that God wants us to use common faith sense. Common faith sense. He doesn't want you to be afraid of him. He wants you to respect him. He wants you to love him. He's not going to exactly the light of the When you mess up, he's going to love on you. But he will chastise you. Take no bones about that, man. We need to be chastised, don't we? Yes. When I got a whipping, when I was a boy, I always still got that talking. My mom said, this hurts me worse than it does you. And I'd hear her go back in her room and cry until she was with her. She would just bawl her eyes out. And one day when I was about 14, I remember her crying, and it broke my heart. But because I respected my father, I didn't respect my mama. Mm. It ran over her. Because she would just get frustrated with me. Wait till your daddy come. Wait till your daddy come. And he became the one who punished me. And I had a deep respect for him. Now, I love my mother. I was a mama's man. But my pop, there was a, a strong respect. If he's a disciple, he was doing something crazy. They feared God. And they feared God, they didn't think God could take care of them. Careth not, shall we perish? The, the one who's going to die for them, the one who's going to give his life for them, don't you care? 
And that, that's like your child. How many of you love your child? Do you do anything more, any more for your child? Three, four, four. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of y'all are just a bad chick. <laughs> but I think that you do. But, but you love your child and you do anything for it. That's like your child. Your child comes up to you. Don't you love me, Mom? Dad? Yeah. Kids at all time. We've had a lot of kids at home. You know, throughout the last 30 some years, we, we, we've done foster care. We have a lot of kids. And, and, and some of them, they, 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 we got, we got, we got, yeah, be careful because she's filming here. And you keep filming. But I've got three that don't want to go back home. They want to be in our house. They got clean rooms. They got warm sheets. They got food. They said, before we go back home, we want that. Mm. We want our own home. God will give you that. But you cannot fear God. You have to respect God. You have to follow God. He wants you to follow him. I'm going to give you an illustration. My grandmother. God bless her heart. The TVA came through and he said, Miss Branson, President Kennedy has signed a, signed a bill that every house either gets electric or water. And you can pick which one you want. She said, well, I have to pay for them. Yes, Miss Branson, you have to pay for them. Now, my mom walked about two miles every day carrying water. And, and so what she did, she had to walk a quarter of a mile down this lady's house, get two buckets of water, walk back up at the half mile. And she had to do it again. Come back up because it took two trips. That's a mile. And then she had to do it in the afternoon. So my grandmother, my mom was the last one there, and she said, Mary Catherine, it's up to you. Well, I wasn't one dead soul. She said, I want electricity. <laughs> well, they got electricity, but they didn't have TV, so it didn't matter. She said, it was dead soul. A couple months later, they TV, TV comes back and they said, Miss Branson, there's something wrong. Now, they didn't have electricity. They, 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 they didn't have power either. Over in Somerset, they have power. <laughs> and, and they said, you're not using your car. She said, yes, I am. They said, well, your meter's not moving. And she said, I use it every night. Mary Captain turned that, that switch on right there. My mom went over and turned the switch on, and the lights came on. She said, I don't have one of those money box, ten cash box, that's all I got. And she said, every night when it gets too dark to see, she said, I'll light my candle, I'll walk right over there and turn those lights on. And she said, if I don't need them, I'll turn them off. That's the, that's the evidence of her having power being plugged into a system and not using it. Hmm. You're plugged into Jesus Christ. Are you not using him? Yes. Can you stop? Can you stop? And then I want to talk to you about faith. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. If he says we're going to do something, we're going to do it. Right. Amen. He got them over to the other side, and they were saved. They were all accounted for. Now, the day that I, the last time I was on the Sea of Galilee, Bobby, it was, it was, it was choppy. It was choppy. Now, it was not like it was that day, but it was a little rough. And we were on a boat like Jesus. They ain't no bigger than what you think. They're, but they're not a huge boat. And we're on this boat, and this lady, she's getting sick on the side, man. She, and she doesn't throw up, and I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be interesting. You know, she just, and we go all the way over to Lebanon, the, the Galileans area. We don't dock, we're not allowed, because we're Muslim. We get there, we get in our water, and then we turn around, around this little red pole that's as far as you're allowed to go, and you come back, and then you go back into Tiberias. That, that wind, man, it was choppy. It was choppy. Now we're running over time, and I'll stop till I'm done. So, Amen. Stand with me. Amen. They got to the other side. He said, Let us go to the other side. And they made it. 
And then he said, peace be still. The word peace be still. That's God to us. You ever told a little baby? Shh. I heard preachers all the time. They don't really read the scriptures, what it says here. They said, Jesus went out and said, when be still. He did not raise his voice. <laughs> Stop. Now listen, I, I know a lot of people that are disagree with me. I know a lot of them that disagree with me, and, that, and that's fine. I consider myself a theologian. Uh, Brother Bobby here is probably the smartest man in the Bible you, you'll have in the area. I, I guarantee you, he's a smart man. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. And man, you might disagree with me on this, so you have the right to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, in the wind, and the sea, see, I believe it became like that. There wasn't a ripple left. Because when Jesus calms your storm, it's done. Amen. There is no evidence of a storm. Now think about it. The master says, Earth, be round. Earth, have land. Earth, have vegetation. Earth, have this animal, have that animal. He's talking. If, if we have a creator, that, that can do that. And, and, and you have to ask yourself, did we actually have a creator that can do that? And, and, and you might say no, and you could be wrong because the scripture says, and that's the authority, right? Amen. And scripture says he did that. So when he does that, why, why can't he take it? Sometimes his mother can do that. Sometimes the baby sees it, no matter what she does. God can control any storm. Right. You can't. If a mother can't control a baby that's just teething, what makes you think you can control the storm that you're in? Yeah. You can't. But right now, you can come up here and you say, Lord, I want my storm to be over. I'm in this storm. Listen, folks. One of the reasons, I'm telling you, one of the main reasons we, we are having so much trouble is, is because we don't pray. At our church, we have an altar call every Sunday morning. And I'm telling you, out of 300 people, I guarantee you, 80 people come to the front. People sort of ask him, Brother Larry Davis, you know Larry? Larry was answering at, at our church, and, and, and before I come, and I'm telling you what, this man got our church on an evangelistic movement that it was just absolutely unbelievable. He started that altar prayer. When I came, a couple people said, you know, it takes a little time. And we, we, you know, we can probably do some more. I said, we're not going to stop that. Because that's important. Right. Whatever happened to come to the altar? Well, I can pray right where I'm right here on that. You know what that is? That's pride. Mm. That's pride sitting your butt down. Mm. This is an altar. The Bible told people in the Old Testament to go and build an altar and, and, and go to it and pray. This is the altar. And I love this. You got a Lord's Supper table. You know what the Lord's Supper table is to me? It's my altar. It's the mercy seat. It, it represents the mercy seat. It represents that, 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 that holy of holies. It represents that. <coughs> it is to be placed at the altar. That veil's been ripped. The altar's here. The storm there. Are you ready to get out of the storm? You ready to stay there? Mm. A few. As, as, the song we just come, I, I want to I wanna ask you one, one more time. Do you believe in an all-powerful God? You said you were in that storm tonight. Listen, you say, well, I've been praying now. Get out of that storm, preacher. I'm all caught up. No, you're not. You're still in the storm, aren't you? Because I'm telling you when, you, when you fully give it to God, that storm is over. That doesn't mean that there's not something to pay. A young boy and a young girl, they, they, they commit sin and they, and they have a child. 
that child is not sin. It's a result of sin, but that child is not sin, but they have to pay for that sin, don't they? For, not for 18 years. I got a 32-year-old that still comes to the grocery store in my house. Mm. And he makes better money than I do. I want you to come tonight. Come talk to your pastor. Say, look, help me out. Come grab Brother, brother Bob. Come grab someone and say, I want, I want you to. I want you to pray with me. Just go on the stairs. Thank you, brother. We'll stand the same. 544. If you need prayer tonight, come with somebody. Come up here to the altar. Don't, don't stay put. Come and let God lead you. Let God change you. Let's stand and sing 544. 